entertainment, religion, movies, food and health, culture and lifestyle, events around the globe, sports and foreign news. Whatever your inclination, we've got you completely covered with programs like Issues of the Moment, The Patriot, Daybreak Nigeria, Mata Africa, TV and Business Time, Healthy Living, From the Cradle, Stay Inspired, Entertainment Gist, Movie Hour, Hit Paradise, among others. All designed to keep you thoroughly informed, entertained, at the edge of your seat and yearning for more. A tour around our domain will reveal a highly dedicated staff force and a state-of-the-art facility and equipment for high-definition quality broadcast, making our station your number one choice in advertising your business and propagating your ideas. We are currently on Nightcom Sat doing our test transmission for takeoff in the nearest future. Television Nigerian is located in Nigeria at Television Nigerian House, Guzapi Hilltop Mansion, beside Guzapi White House, Guzapi Abuja F City, and in the United Kingdom at 45 Engine House, 48 Aerodrome Road, Beaufort Park, Collintail, London. For inquiries, Good morning. My name is Messi Joe. This is Daybreak Africa here on television Nigeria. I hope you had a pleasant night rest. Elvis. Yes, my name is Elvis Oga. Good morning, Messi Joe. Good morning, Elvis. So today is the 4th of May and the lockdown um, lifting has begun today. Yes. Movements, you can see movements around the FCT. True. Cars um, moving around. During the last presidential address uh, to the nation on COVID-19, uh, we saw that okay, the lockdown will be gradually eased as from today. Yes. But before we go into what to expect from the easing <laughs> of this lockdown, yes. we have to put it out to Nigerians that as we're about to go out, it is now an offense for you to go out without your facial face mask. mask because they said people who go out without their facial mask will be arrested and prosecuted. And we have mobile courts all over. So please, as you step out this morning, make sure you go out with your face mask. So it must not be the medical one, they, they, are, they are actually encouraging the usage of uh, the locally fabricated one. So yes. it's, it's not if, really hard. If you're being so cautious about your dress code, you can get the customized face mask. We have black face mask, red face mask to fit your attire. I think this is your red dress. Yes, yes. we, will have, we will have the Ankara design one that people uh, are actually using. So you see, we can actually make do with all these things and do employ carrying your sanitizers up and down. So that in case you're touching anything you don't want to touch, you quickly mm, use your hand sanitizers immediately. immediately. Okay, what you expect from the gradual easing of the lockdown? We saw uh, what has transpired in places like Ghana after easing the lockdown, and we, we saw a slight increase in the number of cases. cases. So, Nigeria. should we be expecting uh, more cases this week? I like the fact that we, we are actually bringing our critical thoughts to the table where people are thinking outside the box to see how we could go about doing our business gradually, or gradually returning back to doing business without much effect of the COVID-19. We've seen a guideline from state like Lagos, Lagos. and then from uh, River State, we saw that people were complaining of how come even when the borders are locked, we've seen, we've seen transmission from one state to another. 
So apart from inaugurating the tax force on COVID-19, we've seen a tax force on border closure mm. from uh, reversed by the governor, Governor mm -hmm. Wiki, precisely. And people actually bringing their different thoughts to the table, how we can actually go about uh, the easing of the lockdown without yeah. uh, spreading the Spe virus more. Speaking of Lagos State, mm. the governor came out to say that Mondays, Wednesdays, um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and, and Thursdays Fridays. and Fridays mm, will be for, be for non-food okay. markets food to market, open. Thursdays and market. Saturdays. Exactly. And even here in Abuja, it's going to be Wednesdays and Saturdays for non-food markets to be opened. So at least it's, it's a better mm -hmm. measure for people. Everybody can go about their other businesses. I can see online vendors now putting out pictures. If you want to buy this, if you want to buy that, they can do their free movements now because they actually, the president actually made statements about producers to consumers and um, mm -hmm. transportation. Yes. So if it's a consumable item, it can be moved from this state to another state, but not uh, movement of persons from states no. to states to states very because importantly, of the transmission. Very importantly, we also need to remind ourselves of the curfew from 8 p.m. So no matter what we do, we have to be very careful or, uh, or be aware of the fact that by 8 p.m. movement will not be permitted except for very core and essential uh, goods or services. So we're still talking about uh, Lagos. I love the fact that the governor has been able to put the, the population into consideration and then has been able to infuse some of those things into his guidelines to see how well they can manage the situation. But people are now looking at the feasibility of these guidelines, like the transport system. Yeah, I saw a video of the CMS bus oh, okay. where they did this um, cancellation on one set, like mm -hmm. one passenger per seat. Mm -hmm. They know there are two sets in the bus, yes. so it's going to be one passenger per seat. So each person will be from behind behind. I think that's a welcome development, but we hope that they will actually follow the guidelines. Still talking about the resumption of duties, and then initially it was uh, projected that a workout from level 12 will resume from today. But now but in 15. Order to, yeah, in Not order even to today, congest, tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday. So that, that's what we're talking about. So if everybody could actually bring this or our critical thought to the table and see how we we'll go about these things, we see that uh, it will go a long way because we know that it might not be the best decision but the hands of the government are tied at the moment because people are actually agitating to go out to see how they can get food to eat and then the economy too, it's, it's almost coming to a standstill yeah. and we know what that effect that could bring on our nation. And speaking about the mysterious deaths in Kano State, mm. um, the task force has come to say that this mysterious deaths mm -hmm. were as a result of well, COVID-19. COVID largely. largely. And I remember the fear you were expressing sometimes back that, okay, the cause of this death has not How been ascertained. Yes. And then people die of this, and then people that go to bury them go do that with their bare hands. Bare hands. Touching them, even when they collapsed, probably they took them to some hospitals they were not aware. I, I already know of a personal encounter of someone who died mm -hmm. of this in Kano State. And there were lots of people that gathered, oh, he fainted, uh -huh. he took it to the hospital, they couldn't quickly check his BP, blah, 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 this, that, that. Now, how many people have come in contact with him? Already? The statistics are even coming from Kano is quite worrisome because out of every 100 that has been tested, 80% is testing positive already. But there are actually some good news coming that we saw where Dangote Foundation donated a mobile testing lab to the state, and that was actually fabricated by a Nigerian in Nigeria. And Very they, encouraging. Yeah, and they were progress. talking about bringing more of these things and collecting several samples that have not been tested because of shortage of reagent worldwide. It's another issue we've been talking about with that. Okay. Now, my concern also goes to the NCDC. Lots of Nigerians are coming out to feel like the NCDC are not doing enough, mm. but they're actually doing so well. Yes. Even the NCDC boss, in a statement yesterday, he was making, I do not leave um, the office till there about 1 a.m. Mm. I have some staffs that have already been infected mm. by the COVID-19. Yeah, so you see situations like this, we have to encourage them because they are also human beings human just beings. as we are. True. So we can't keep... And they, they had to make a statement about people complaining that the NCDC does not um, respond to their oh, calls. Or the same. But they said, no, most people that call us are trying to prank us. I have cough. I have this. Only to find that at the end of the call that they were just pranking them. And then some people are actually calling to say, Auntie, this I'm hungry, or kine, kine, hunger virus. You understand that kind of thing? I, so I it's get it. that, that's, that's uh, the part of the climb we found ourselves, where people tend to take advantage of everything. And then I don't know how, they, how we tend to bring humor and comic to everything, even no matter how serious it is. But away from that. The bill. 
yeah, infectious disease bill. I, I feel Nigerians, there are lots of reactions from Nigerians. I think there are some sections in the bill that gives the NCDC power mm. over autopsy, yeah. mostly in cases, in a case like Kano State now, mm. where autopsy was not allowed to be carried out on the dead patients. Sure. Now, NCDC, this is where they come and they now have the power. Mm. With this bill, they will have the power to say, no, we must conduct tests on that dead body autopsy to understand what led to his to We've death. actually seen different reactions from Nigeria concerning this bill. But one thing that we need to know is that the intent or the intention of this bill is not actually bad, but it is the condition or the clauses in this bill that people are actually looking at, where so many powers were vested on the NCDC Director, Director General, General. Uh, leaving aside uh, the governors and even not the minister being talked about more. And then people are now looking at, okay, how, um, uh, how do I put it now? How, how well is this bill regarding to uh, the... How, how well did the bill take into consideration it's also human giving, rights? Yeah, it's also giving power to the police. That's where human yes. rights comes in. Giving power to the police if I cough in the mm. public, it means I have COVID-19 or any infection. And, we know, disease, how and how they of, take me away. we know how some of those things operate in our country where people tend to victimize people for no reason. You could just look at someone and be like, okay, this person is my neighbor. Who I don't like this bad. person. Which tell me badly. Get, and then so they use that power. That's where it comes That's in. where Nigerians are actually reacting to uh, very, very, very much. And we are actually looking at, okay, if we are saying most of this power has been vested on the NCDC boards, and okay, we also have to look at, like in the case of coronavirus now, it's good that had it been, if bills like this were in place before this, it would have been more easier for us to manage uh, the novel coronavirus um, more efficiently. Exactly. So we don't need to wait for another outbreak before we think about bills like this. But one thing we need to look at is, okay, like regarding the coronavirus, there are a whole lot of conspiracy theories. So the issue of mandatory vaccine, we need mm -hmm. to look at it very well so that it not be like exchanging our bed child for a, for a plate of porridge or something. Yeah, you got it there. This is still Daybreak Africa here on Television Nigeria. Let's join Susan Achi on the news desk for news across Nigeria. <laughs> Corona, this is the corona. Corona, 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 corona
this. Good morning and welcome to AM News. I am Susan Achim. Media practitioners all across the world observed World Press Freedom Day yesterday, the 3rd of May 2020, a day set aside by the United Nations General Assembly to raise awareness on the importance of press freedom. This year's theme is Journalism Without Fear or Favor, but the conference has been postponed to October 18 over COVID-19 concerns. Nigeria has recorded 170 new cases of the novel coronavirus, bringing the country's total infections to 2,558. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, on Sunday, of the new infections, 39 are in Lagos, 29 from Kano, 24 in Ogun, 18 from Bauchi. The FCT and Sokoto had 12 each, while Katsina has 8 cases and 7 cases were recorded in Borno. Three cases were recorded in Nasarawa, 2 in Adamawa and 1 in Oyo State. Of the 2,558 cases, 400 have been discharged, while 87 deaths have been recorded. The president of Tanzania says he will send a plane to Madagascar to import a herbal tonic, which has been touted as a cure for coronavirus by the country's president. Congo Brazzaville's president has also promised to import the drink. It is produced from the Atmesia plant, the sort of an ingredient used in a malaria treatment. The World Health Organization has said there is no proof of any cure and has advised people against self-medicating. We now move back to Nigeria where the Emma of Emir of Kaura Naoda in Zamfara State and Haji Muhammad Asha is dead. He is believed to have died of complications from the COVID-19 while undergoing treatment at an isolation center in Gusau, the state capital. Confirming the incident, the Commissioner for Health in the state, Ihaya Kanoma, said the late Emir fell ill on Friday and was admitted at the specialist hospital in Gusau. He explains that the deceased was immediately put in isolation after he showed symptoms of COVID-19 along with his wife while his blood sample was collected for testing. We now move on to the world of business and there is good news for the bankers as the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN and the Bankers Committee have agreed to suspend layoffs in banks across the Federation. This agreement was reached at a special meeting of the Bankers Committee which was convened on May 2nd, 2020 to further review the implications of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Nigerian banking industry. At the special meeting, the committee particularly deliberated on the issue of the operating costs of banks in view of the disruptions emanating from the global economic difficulties. Now, on the entertainment scene, Big Brother Niger 2019 first runner of Mike Edwards and wife, Perry Shakes Drayton, will be welcoming their first child soon. The couple took to the social media pages to reveal the good news as Perry shared a photo of the baby bomb. Hi, Hi guys. guys. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure by now you are all up to date with uh, 
latest news. Where do we start? Well, obviously, me and Mike are expecting our first child. Pregnant! Well, we are pregnant! <laughs> we I've been wanting to say that for the longest. I haven't been holding Mike it. Mike loves to say that, so you got so, it out there. <laughs> Definitely the beautiful one right there. Well, congratulations to Mike and Perry. And that's it on AM News. I am Susan Achin. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, Elvis. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. That particularly just brightened my face. <laughs> sounds like a good one. You know, uh, yeah. the last uh, Big Brother uh, competition, mm. Mike was this housemate that was loved by everyone. Highly everybody. desired. Yes. yes. The women loved him. The men yeah. admired Still, him. Still, he was very <laughs> focused on <laughs> his wife. And the way he handled the situation, I remember this particular incident where mm. uh, he had a little shoving with her. Uh, Mm. And the way he handled the situation. Very mature. Gradually, so mm. mature. I'm really very happy and excited. Yeah, about the it's, same it's time. a big one. That's a very it's, well it's actually a very good one when you see young people doing mm, really well. the right Mike, thing. Mike actually having a company in far away UK mm. and then portraying also, the Nigerian you know, image in a very good light. It's actually managing good. his marriage, you know, business and all that together. Yeah, okay. managing the world. The big one that happened yesterday, what praise mm. day. Yeah. <laughs> very beautiful one right there. And the topic, you know, the theme was it's actually something that brings to mind a lot of things, you mm -hmm. know, ongoing around sure. us when it comes to the press, uh, world, the world over, talking about journalism without fear or mm -hmm. favor. Yes. You know, and having a free press, where there's freedom of expression, freedom of factual information, you know, even though we're in a world where there's a lot of fake news uh, because of social media, but we are looking forward to having 100% free press, you know, that is carrying out their duties without fear or favor. My little issue with uh, that celebration particular mm. yesterday was that it fell on a Sunday, but thank God we're here and we're talking about of it course. today. And then ordinarily uh, press is mm. one profession or journalism is mm -hmm. one profession that is quite a good one because mm. it's more like the watch eye of the society. Yeah, and then the, the, common man, of the, the common man gets to hear his or her voice mm. being uh, put out and then a lot of, uh, how do I put it, a lot of um, uh, corrections are being made to mm. things that people feel are not going well. Mm. But we need to look at how uh, pressmen are being treated how, world yes. Yes, worldwide. Uh, are they, are how they, they are actually accepted. allowed to express or, or, or just bring out the true news the mm. way it is? Or there are some level of you know, yeah. And then looking at their remuneration, if actually these people are being treated well, they might not want they to be more motivated to, yeah, and they will not want to listen to mm. people to influence news or anything mm. exactly yes actually there will be no need for all no, those no need for okay, um, the death of um the, the emir, emir of zamfara yeah. state yeah. actually reminded me of something mm. he was in isolation waiting yes. for his results from the ncdc and it reminded me of a situation where i heard um Mm -hmm. Someone, she was waiting for her result as well from mm -hmm. the NCDC. She mm -hmm. hadn't found, gotten her result from the NCDC, mm -hmm. so she just decided to self-isolate herself, mm -hmm. giving drugs to herself. Mm -hmm. I heard of that story, but mm -hmm. I don't know the authenticity of the story. Okay. But then this thing happened, mm -hmm. and he is on the older side, yeah. so one would have naturally he expected, expected that before then he would pass away. Mm -hmm. May his rest in peace. Mm. True. And that actually brought my attention to look at what's been happening in Kano State. That people are actually trying to look at it from different perspectives, mm. like the mysterious death. Although we saw similar cases in the US, Italy mm. during their peak period of the infection of mm. coronavirus. But Nigeria are now trying to look at it from the traditional angle. Mm. You know, a lot of murky waters have been surrounding the of traditional course. institution of in Kano. Yes. Mm. And people are trying to look at it if the gods are really angry <laughs> or something as, as Africans that we are. Mm. Away from that, um, a country Tanzania, Tanzania importing Madagascar. Even when WHO has said that there is should no not, cure, they shouldn't mm -hmm. be taken seriously. Yes, I mean people cannot wait anymore, and I think Nigeria is also making moves towards getting a vaccine. I, I heard something yesterday, I think from the, the NCDC boss, boss. You know what he was saying. I think if this is some.
the nine have undergone a form of FGM, according to the United Nations. In Sudan, it is common for women to get the inner and outer labia and usually the clitoris. Female genital mutilation can result in urinary tract inf infections, kidney infections, cyst reproductive issues, and pain during sex. Girls get caught because of a widespread cultural belief that it is essential for girls' repetitions and future marriage prospects. That is all we have for you on News Across Africa. Deep Break Africa continues shortly with Mercy and Elvis. This is still Daybreak Africa here on television, Nigeria. It's the time for newspaper review. It's time for newspaper review. We have Victor Temba in the building. All right. <laughs> Victor, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Victor. How was your weekend? Fantastic. Uh, How was it like? I'm feeling refreshed. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a weekend. You, know, yeah. you take the weekend off to rest mm -hmm. and shed off the stress of the week. So, yes. yes. So, how was it like refreshed. coming over today? Well, the world, uh, like, since today they've lifted the okay. lockdown, actually. I didn't come to the office today, I came yesterday, and then the road was free actually. <laughs> so I don't know how it basically is at the moment. Okay. But, uh, been good. Let's right. take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Yeah. The headlines here, COVID-19, relaxed lockdown may be catastrophic, PDP reps say. Say Nigerians' government not prepared for consequences. Our people doubt coronavirus. This is from Borno, Deputy Governor. Lagos records another three deaths, Ebony, fifth case. Nasara Assembly lawmaker Zamfara Emia dead. Or you'll get two new cases, mother, son, test positive in Oshun. Attendees at Abakiaris barrier test negative, FCTA says. So which do we look at well, this morning? We, we, we just, just look at from what the dealers and PDP reps are saying that the relaxed lockdown may be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Not maybe it is going to be uh, it is going to be catastrophic. Uh, 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 earlier on the show, you guys talk about the guidelines that have been put in place by Lagos State Government to make sure of this. But uh, maybe after this, after the show, you have to go online and then look at the pictures coming out of Lagos at the moment. So obviously, the social distancing is only going to be observed why why in um, buses <laughs> or in vehicles but not at the bus stop because right now pictures i'm seeing coming out of uh, lagos, lagos. Street at the moment people are still jump packed yeah, at the uh, busy bus stop waiting for buses and all of that and then we also look at the guidelines is they are very difficult that they are that they are going to work also looking at the bonus state governor coming out to say that people do not believe in in, mm -hmm. in this covid so it means ignorance is also go, going to be an yeah, issue. Major key. Um, yeah, and then we also look at the fact that um, already at this at this figure that we are 258, we are already recording about 87 deaths, which is way high. Minus so, the deaths that have not been confirmed in Kano state. states. Yes. So, but let's leave at 87. 87 is just too high. The last South Africa had 87 deaths. They were at 5,200 something cases, mm -hmm. and we are just about 2,500. So yes. And we're already recording 87 cases. What happens when we get to that figure? So right now, it means that uh, we cannot really say for sure that we, we can handle this relaxed uh, lockdown. I feel that at the end, it will be the people begging the government to impose the lockdown. Impose the lockdown. Yes. Because so, talking about the Lagos State, when you were talking about pictures flying in from the bus stop, I think that's one area that we did not see much uh, regulation regards the guidelines. We did not see what's supposed to be done at the bus stop, and it's one key area we need to look into. So, Tango, we're sounding it from here. So, maybe authorities are listening. Mm, they yes, have to do something think. about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, away from uh, that, from the Guardian newspaper, we have the banner headline Mass sacking in banks averted as CBN waits in. Doctors, pharmacists disagree over easing COVID 19 lockdown. Mm. Mm, that, that's also an issue. And then for the CBN coming out to say mm. bankers shouldn't lay off uh, workers. Uh, Okay, the this in question I asked when mm -hmm. when that this in came out, the whole paper came out. Yes. I like does the CBN has that authority? Do they have that power to tell a private entity mm -hmm. not, not to lay off workers and uh, all of that? We understand they are actually coming from 
uh, it's sympathy. Yes, a less and compassionate angle yes. that things are going to be difficult. You don't need to lay off people. And you know, last week Friday we discussed about uh, Access Bank trying to lay off um, about 75% so, so, of, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, of their staff yeah, and all of that. And reduce their salaries. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So right now, with this less and CBN order in place, it means every everybody gets to stay. But then the question remains: Does the CBN has that, that, that authority, that power? Are they are they empowered with that kind of authority to tell bankers when or not to sack people and all of that? Because this basically takes me back to like an, like like less than Zimbabwe in 2008 under. Mm -hmm. Let's say Mugabe, or in 2018 under let's Nicolas say um, this Maduro of uh, Venezuela or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't think that's that's the kind of situation that we want hmm. at this moment. Okay, you know CBN being the Apex Bank, and then uh, the, 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 there are some directives or or do I call them guidelines that come from them. We've seen before you open a bank, the liquidity ratio is being kept with them so that when you are running at loss and you cannot continue operation, they can just come to your succor. Mm -hmm. And then if you have bad debt, the Apex Bank actually serves this debt. So we're trying to look at if they can take all these things into consideration and say, okay, because these banks particularly are running at loss at the moment, and they say one of the ways they can uh, move on with their business is to make sure that some people give way. So if the Apex Bank is coming to say this, generally they have to make provision how to come to these people's succor, these people's aid. And then another angle you have to look at it from is the fact that Susan has it in her news where she talked about the agreement being reached by uh, the Central Bank and the Bankers Association. So Committee. Yes. Yeah, Committee. Yes. Uh, the first of us to understand, like, like, I, like I said here mm. uh, last week, bank, banks do not have any reason to lay off staff for any, for any reason. They can't say no, no. this. Shall, they never run out of money. Yes. Because even while we are on lockdown, they are still charging people for less than maintenance fees, still charging people for ATM eight maintenance fees, yeah. still charging people for SMS, SMS and all SMS. of those things. So basically, they are still making money. money. So they can't really claim to be running at, at loss for them to live. But then we also understand the less than politics of the uh, private sector. Mm -hmm. They are always looking at maximizing profit at, at all costs and at all means. Mm. So this will just be an excuse for them. You know, private sector sometimes do not even really like paying salaries, they don't even take workers welfare that no, seriously. And then when you look at the bank the banking sector, most of the lower cadre um, staff are mostly outsourced to companies that so the bank so the banks do not have direct responsibility for mm. these people. For it's welfare. just another way of them maximizing profit. So with this COVID nineteen a lot of people are cashing it on it, using mm. it as an excuse, even those who shouldn't have an excuse to lay off workers so, so we're, they basically, can get to we're basically taking it as they're trying to take advantage of the situation around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's to an extent. To an extent. To an extent. So because of time, let's take a look at the Nation newspaper. PTF, coronavirus cause of mass deaths in Kano State. Mm -hmm. I think let's take a look at that. Well, it, um, I think last, was it Saturday or was it Friday, mm -hmm. the, 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 the lesson Kano State government, government came out to admit that the cases were linked to this COVID-19, COVID and now the PTF, that, that is the decent task force that, that the president sent mm. specially to Kano, has also come out to say this mass death were linked, linked to, to coronavirus. coronavirus. So and you should take it one week or some days to fully... Fully, yes. Yeah. So estimate. it means that they, okay, they have actually given out how they came at that conclusion, and then they're still demanding for one week extra so that they could come at a very final, at a, at a final, final note, team. yeah, to say, to really say these were cases of COVID-19, but then if there were cases of COVID-19, at the rates where, at the rate at which they were dying, was quite troubling. Um, Too you know. troubling, because some Nigerians are now saying that the deaths that were recorded in Kano State, they should tally them up with the normal, the, the deaths presently in that Nigeria. Be that means we'll be going close to a thousand deaths already in Nigeria and that's yeah, very yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, that because we remember at a particular time we had about 640 dead um, as, as alleged even though, even though the government came up to give their own figures. As and 13. I remember we were talking about official and unofficial. official. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, are, there are always official figures and there are unofficial, unofficial figures. figures. Yes. Right. Okay, from the Punch newspaper, 80% of Kano coronavirus samples positive that's coming from Guari's panel. Most of the strange death in Canada caused by COVID-19 says Guaza. Lagos draws timetable for workers' resumption, food markets, all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we just discussed uh, mm -hmm. right there from the from this, uh, the nation mm -hmm. and then the Lagos timetable actually a good idea. But then 
why I say this these guidelines in Lagos can't really work is because Lagos is too populated for that kind of guidelines to work. If it's in a state about five million people, mm -hmm. two or four million people, then we we could reason in that direction that this may work. But then, even if you open Lagos for just one day, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a, a whole lot. Okay. Let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. I'm seeing this very disturbing headline. Killing of 55 journalists covering COVID-19. We need special protection. This is coming from the NGE. Mm, 55 the, journalists covering COVID-19 being killed. That is, that's, that's a huge number. And, and then basically this is coming just when the world is... Trying sorry, to celebrate World Press Day the, that yesterday. Yeah, I, I, you know, press, press people all over the world, not just Nigeria, all over the world. There have been some sort of... Uh, endangered species because you know the thing is as 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 press people what you do is always to bring out the facts put out what is the truth out there in the public be the conscience of the society and a lot of people who do things contrary to the conscience would not want these things to, go to be to, to to go out for any reason whatsoever imagine for the past few years it has really been a rough time for Latin journalists in Nigeria, yes. from Bayesa to Akwaibom to Abuja to Lagos to Ekiti, a lot of journalists being, uh, hunt, uh, let, being, being arrested, arrested, maltreated, put into molested, this near, of this, for all the same reason of they just doing their work. So, 55 people came for just let them reporting COVID 19. That, that is very unfair. It's very unfair for somebody it's too to unfair die because, to be of because of COVID 19. The work they do. It's, it's Let's take a look at the headline from the Daily Sun. Compulsory face mask use. Other measures take off today. That is the banner headline as NMA fears fresh COVID-19 lockdown. Beside the nameplate, emo workers lament three months on paid salaries. Um, we have CBN bankers committee suspend planned layoff in banks. Mm. Emo workers lamenting a three months of non payment of salary. So I I don't know how they are basically going to do that at this moment because now that they are battling with COVID nineteen again and all of that. Yes. Okay, and finally from the business day, Samuelo's leadership skills come under COVID nineteen test. Nigeria faces battle from within to keep reform promises made to IMF. Mm. Mm. Okay, so because you know the thing with uh, IMF is they, they they just don't give you loan; they always give you loan with conditions mm. that has to do with policies. Yes. Sometimes they give you loan and then they tell you that you have to relax and devalue the, your uh, your own currency mm. for this whatever reason. Or mm. no, we are, if you are going to give you loan, then you must look at these reforms. Can mm. you do a lot of this? And we we and um, we believe that sometimes these are actually in good light to help the countries economy to be stable and all of that but sometimes you know international politics are also looking at the fact that maybe these are actually conditions to further uh, to further make that particular country dependent on foreign and, uh, yeah. and, and looking at the situation that this is now involved in it's really a very um, crucial one mm -hmm. we have to say and Nigerians waking up to realities to see that okay how well do we meet up with these guidelines and then conditions given by the IMF IMF yeah. that's why Nigerians are facing pressure from within and okay. I think they, 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 we can we've uh, always found a way around this <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you Victor Temba it's been a nice time having you for the newspaper review thank you for having me okay it's we'll nice. see you tomorrow Definitely. stay safe yeah, yeah, okay too. this is still Daybreak Africa here on television Nigeria Let's go across Africa and see the news topping headlines. Hello and welcome to another episode of Healthy Living. Today's topic is cholera. Cholera is a bacterial disease, usually spread through contaminated water. Cholera causes severe diarrhea and dehydration. Symptoms of cholera infection may include a rapid onset of cupious, smelly diarrhea, vomiting, wrinkled skin, low blood pressure, and dry mouth. Diarrhea, which is the first one, cholera-related diarrhea comes on suddenly and may quickly cause dangerous fluid loss as much as about one liter an hour. Diarrhea due to cholera often has a pile, 
milky appearance that resembles water in which rice has been rinsed. Rice water stew. Nausea and vomiting is the second one, occurring especially in the early stage of cholera. Vomiting may persist for hours at a time. Dehydration, which is the third one, dehydration can develop within hours after the onset of cholera symptoms, depending on how many the body fluids have been lost. Dehydration can range from mild to severe. A loss of 10% or more of total body weight indicates severe dehydration. Signs and symptoms of cholera. Dehydration include irritability, sun, skin, eyes, a dry mouth, extreme chest, dry and straight skin that slows to bounce back when pinched into a fold, little or no urine output, low blood pressure, and irregular heartbeats. Dehydration may lead to a rapid loss of minerals in your blood that maintain the balance of fluid in your body. This is called an electrolyte imbalance, causes of cholera, contaminated water supplies, uncooked fruits, dirty vegetables, and other foods can also contain the bacteria that causes cholera. How to prevent cholera? Avoid dirty foods, cook food well, especially seafood, keep it covered, eat it hot, and peel fruits and vegetables. Drink and use safe and clean water. Use latrines, do not defecate on the ground. Wash your hands often with soap and safe water. Treatment for cholera. The main treatment for cholera is fluid and electrolyte replacement, both oral and IV. Antibiotics usually are used in severe infections in which dehydration has been occurred. Anyone who has been in a high risk region within the previous five days and develop severe vomiting and diarrhea should seek urgent medical assessment. Although cholera can be life-threatening, it is easily treated by immediate rehydration, that is replacement of fluid and salt loss through diarrhea. Oral rehydration fluid is recommended. This can be obtained from pharmacies. Patients with severe dehydration or who are unable to keep oral fluid down require hospitalization and intravenous fluid replacements. Antibiotics shorten the duration of illness and lessen the severity, but they are not as important as rehydration. Thank you for watching today's episode. Remember, not all sicknesses are being cured by medicines. Some of them just need a happy soul, happy mind, and laughter. So always be happy. That was held in leaving on, on cholera in communities, talking about how bad water causes cholera and to citizens of nations. Talking about dehydration, you know, that's one aspect of our living we don't pay much attention to because when we talk about hydration or dehydration, people might just think it's just ordinarily water. But there are some foods that you take that actually uh, re re result to you being dehydrated or not, like too much of salt is not good. Yes, yes, Personally, yes. When, when I eat a meal that is too salty, you just feel that your lips start drying up and all of that. Then yes. and when then you take fruits like fruits. watermelon and all. Exactly, that can actually replenish the water in your system. Okay, uh, let's... Take it straight to our next package that is talking about Amazing Africa, talking about the 10 indigenous uh, tribes in Africa. Africa. Welcome and thank you for watching to Nacheki, the best source of African lists, entertainment, pop culture and news. And in this video, Tunacheki takes you through the top 10 tribes in Africa that have best preserved their cultural practices. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and hit the bell icon to support the channel. Number 10, the Wudabe. This tribe is found in Niger and Chad. They speak the Fula language and are a subgroup of the Fulani. The Wudabe translate to the people of the Tabu, which is a reference to them being separated from the Fulani centuries ago. Number 9. The Tureg. 
These tribes are found in Niger, Algeria, Libya, and Mali. The tribe practices Islam but have unique customs that differ them from others who practice the religion. The group speaks Arabic, Husa, Takmesh as the main language. Number 8. The Pygmies. This group consists of tribes living in the rainforests in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Central African Republic, as well as Rwanda. Pygmy tribe members are known to be very short and small. Number 7. The Maasai. One of the most well-known indigenous tribes in Africa, the Maasai are reported to have migrated from Sudan into Kenya and Tanzania. This group's lifestyle revolves around their cattle as they consider cattle to be a sign of wealth and prestige. Number 6. The Karamajong. They are believed to have migrated from Ethiopia to Uganda and their language has Nairo-Sahara traces spoken in Uganda, South Sudan and Kenya. They shun modern clothes and favor traditional clothing. Number 5. The Karo. The tribe occupies the lower Omo Valley in Ethiopia. They are known for their body art, which consists of a mixture of white chalk, yellow mineral rock, iron, and charcoal. They appear very unique and beautiful from all other tribes. Number 4. The Khoisan. Culturally, the Khoisan are divided into the Sun or the Bushmen and the Pastoral Khoi. The Khoisan are the original inhabitants of Southern Africa before the Bantu migration from the West and East of Africa. Number 3. The Dogon. These indigenous people of Mali are believed to be the descendants of the Egyptians. They are known for their vast astronomical knowledge as well as their masked dances, wooden sculptures and architecture. Number 2. The Hadza. Living off the shore of Tanzania's Lake Inyasi, the Hadza are one of the last groups of hunters and gatherers in the world. They speak a distinctive clicking language which has led many people to believe they could be related to the Khoisan of Southern Africa. Number 1. The Himba. The Himba resides in Namibia and Angola and have stuck to their traditions for centuries. At the moment, the tribe has about 30,000 to 50,000 members and are famous for their unique hairstyle and red ochre as they smear them all over their bodies to give them a nice, beautiful tint. Did you like our video? Please let us... Those were 10 indigenous tribes in Africa. Mm. And you saw the um, Ethiopia, the Karo tribe of um, Ethiopia, where they are known for beautiful. They are more beautiful than other tribes. You know, Ethiopians are actually uh, one of the uh, most beautiful races. Yes, and that's where you have the it's things like the mandarins and all, all around the globe, like they are. They're the very gorgeous ladies. people. Mm -hmm. Mostly they're ladies. They're very this time I was actually looking for somewhere I could just go for a holiday and I was actually looking at, okay, taking into consideration uh, the kind of religion that's being practiced that will match my faith and all that. That's one country that actually came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the Maasai from Kenya, Pygmies from Congo DR, who are actually short, uh, actually that piqued my interest because most people would want to look at their situation as shortcoming, but these people look at it as their beauty, as their uniqueness. As their long coming, it, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the funny one. And okay. they're talking about the Dagons from Mali. Yes, yeah, descendants that, of um, Egypt. Mm -hmm, that fought or defended Egypt, and then they are known for their astronomical knowledge and all. It's actually a good one. Okay, um, mm. you just look at the Hadza from Tanzania, <laughs> yes. a group of hunters. So I'm sure that um, anytime, any day, they can be our uh, hunters and hunters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go across and see, launch another package in the program, 10 
worst cities, worst cities in, in Africa. Africa. I would like to see that. Top 10 worst countries to live in Africa. This is based on different factors ranging from corruption, war, and economic difficulties. Number 10. Number nine. Number eight. Number seven. Number six. Number five. Number four. Number three. Number two. Number one. Welcome back. That was a package on 10 worst countries in Africa. And when you take a look at what actually made them the worst, con worst uh, countries in Africa, you see different um, scenarios like corruption, ethnicity, yeah, and, several, yeah, and several other uh, inhumane uh, qualities, that, if you want to put it that way. 
Like we we're talking about ethnicity, where we are supposed to look at our diversity as a blessing, as a strength, and but, try to be one. Yes, better. and see it as a beauty. We now t turn around and do the opposite of it, and Reverse it's not good. is the case. So, so what that actually uh, taught me is the fact that we need to look at those problems that actually made these things worse countries, and then look at how we can address them and turn them to best countries. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> we have left you. We hate, we gave you the worst countries in um, Africa. Let's leave you with the best countries. That is, Africa. Say, that is the much we can take on the program this That's morning. That's much we can take this morning. My name is Messi Joe. And my name is Elvis Oga. Remember to always follow our live feed at www.tvn.news. Let's do this again tomorrow. Please stay safe and wear your mask. Wear your face mask. Yes. Use your sanitizers. sanitizers. <laughs> Wash your hands frequently. I, I think we have time. a customized song. Where we have not played it yet. <laughs> Sanitize <laughs> your hands. Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Make keep, you stay uh, so a bit, keep, keep it good, good hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice one having you here. Please have a pleasant day and maintain your movement, no social distancing. In as much as Africa is perceived as the poorest continent in the world, there are some cities on the continent that would make you want to have a second thought about the general perception. These cities can rub shoulders with some big cities of the world such as Madrid, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, Paris and even Tokyo. Let's take a look at the top 10 cities that made the list of top 10 most beautiful cities in Africa. Rwanda, Angola Capital of Africa's second largest oil producer, Luanda, is home to the nation's main seaport and administrative center. In the past decade, this city has achieved the most development among any city in Africa with the help of China International Trust and Investment Corporation, CITIC. Luanda is looking more like a Western country. Agadir, Morocco Capital of Agadir, Ida Otanen province, Agadir is one of the major urban cities of Morocco. The city has been rebuilt after the 1960 earthquake. It is now Morocco's largest seaside resort, attracting tourists from all over the world. Nairobi, Kenya Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya, Kenya's largest city and capital Nairobi, is the most popular city in Eastern Africa and it is one of the leading cities in Africa both politically and economically. Cape Town, South Africa. Cape Town is famous for its harbor, Table Mountain, and Cape Point. It is the most popular international tourist destination in South Africa. Cairo, Egypt, the home of civilization. Cairo is Egypt's capital and the largest city in the Middle East and second largest in Africa after Lagos. This city was named the world's 24-hour city in 2011 by Badeau ahead of New York and Paris. Port Louis, Mauritius. The capital city of Mauritius, Port Louis, is one of Africa's main financial centers. This city is mostly overshadowed by its financial hub, tourism, manufacturing sector, and port facilities. This nation's languages include English and French. <laughs> Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Former capital, richest and largest city in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, is the major city for both business and government in Tanzania. Abuja, Nigeria. Nigeria's capital Abuja was built in the 80s before disposing Lagos as the capital city of the most populous black nation in the world by the administration of General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, IBB, in 1991. The city is one of the richest and most expensive in Africa. To Tunis, Tunisia. Tunis is both the capital and the largest city of Tunisia. The greater metropolitan area of Tunis, often referred to as Grand Tunis, holds some 2.7 million inhabitants. As the capital city of the country, Tunis is the focus of Tunisian political and administrative life. It is also the center of the country's commercial activity. Johannesburg, South Africa. By population, Johannesburg is the largest and wealthiest city in South Africa called Africa's economic powerhouse. This city is also the largest economy of any metropolitan region in sub-Saharan Africa. Africa is beautiful and vast and it is growing every day. <laughs>